Hello everyone, how are we doing? Dr. Henry Ramirez, Southern Oklahoma Women's Health. I'm here to give you another update as I've been um, this past week on COVID-19. Um, it's changing day by day, so it's very important to continue giving the information. Um, this weekend, being at home, I watched a lot of the news and I'm telling you, some of those numbers seem very scary. So um, sometimes when we, when we get scared of things, we lose our hope and then we feel like there's nothing that we can do. Well, I'm here to kind of give you back some hope. I'm here to give you back some of the numbers that we do know um, and give you the ability to control the things that we can't. There's plenty of things in life that we can't control. So let's not focus on those, let's focus on the things that we can. So here's what we have at hand. If we take just a modest number of 10% infections rate of COVID-19, and we think about the population area that Ardmore, Marcy Ardmore takes care of is about 100,000, then we expect about 10,000 infections in this area. Again, COVID-19 is a novel virus. None of us have immune system to it. A lot of us are gonna get sick. Most of us are gonna be perfectly fine. A large percentage of us won't even have any symptoms. But it's important to know the infection rate so that we know what else we can do about it. With 10,000 infections, we expect 1% of those to be severe. That equals 100 cases. So keep that number 100 cases in mind because that's an important number for us. How do we get infected to start with? Large majority of us get infected by being in crowded, com compact areas um, with exposure to someone that's infected. The second way we get infected is from contacted it from area, surface areas that are infected already. Um, so to kind of put that in numbers to you and your household, if someone comes into your household and they're infected, let's say you come home and you're infected and you're in your household, you have 10% chance of infecting of someone else in your household. If you're just walking by somebody casually in a non-compact area, it's like 0.5% of getting infected. These are numbers that are coming from the World Health Organization from studies they did in China. So there's a lot of numbers and things that we do know. Um, how long does COVID live on surface areas? We know that in copper, it lives four hours. We know that in cardboard and paper, it lives 24 hours. We know that in plastic and stainless steel, it lives 72 hours, which is, which is a good amount of time. Who's most at risk of having the severe outcome? Of course, people above the age of 65, people with comorbidities, a lot of different sickness, heart disease, diabetes, lupus, autoimmune issues, asthma, and people that, are, people that are immunocompressed. Children and teenagers, for the most part, we've seen that they may get infected, but a lot of them are asymptomatic or very minimal amount of symptoms. Um, the reason that's important is because we also have to know that children will be the ones that could shed the virus and things like that. So protect your elderly at home. So with that being said, so now we go back over here to everything that we have seen in the news, right? How do we flatten this curve or what is this curve about? So to give you a quick explanation of what this curve is, this axis is telling us the daily number of severe cases. This is the time since outbreak, the time from first infection, okay? So this first graph here is if we did nothing. So in our town, in Ardmore, if we did nothing, that means that within a week period of time, week or two period of time, we'll have 100 cases, right? Those 100 cases will, in that small amount of time, will surpass the hospital ability, which is this line right here, the hospital ability to respond. So it would overwhelm our hospital system. Now, if we do all the things that we've been told to do up to this point, we can actually stretch that curve out and still have 100 cases but over a long period of time, which your hospital will be able to manage. This is very important because in a small community like this, our hospitals are very important. If our hospital becomes overwhelmed, then it'll be a trickle effect on all of us. So very important to understand this and to know that we have control at or or flatten the curve. These are the things that we can do to flatten the curve. Number one, social distancing. Social distancing does work just because we know that a casual contact is 0.5% of infection. So stay away from major crowded areas. If you're going to public, stay three to six feet from someone. Everything you touch out in public, make sure you wash your hands before you touch your mouth or your, hand, or your, or your, mouth, your eyes or your mouth. Wash your hands, wash your hands at home. Wash your hands anytime you touch anything. That's very important to decrease the viral load on your hands. 
Um, clean your surfaces. We spoke about how long it lives on the surfaces. Clean all your countertops um, with just household dirt detergents, fine. The thing, one thing that you have to think of is that we're getting mail and cardboard and things shipped to us. So whenever you do check your mail, um, discard the paper, wash your hands. Don't put it on your countertops, put it in a safe place, clean place that you can keep, keep things um, basically quarantined. Um, also, the other thing that you're gonna think about cleaning your surfaces is you know, your steering wheel, your, your doorknobs, and all those things. Keep your elderly safe. We know that elderly are the ones that are dying most from this infection. So those are the people that we have to take a whole lot of, a lot of precaution for. If you're going to visit, hey, wear a mask, wash your hands, put clothes, whatever you can to keep your elderly um, family members safe is very important because they're the most at risk. Self-quarantine if you're, if you're sick, like any other time. If you're coughing and sneezing, I don't want you near me. Nobody wants you near them. So just stay at home, quarantine yourself. Those symptoms will die out over a two to three week period of time. Um, if things you feel things are starting to get severe, then it's the time to pick up the phone and get more information on what you need to do next. Stay positive. I've told you all week, staying positive is important. Being panicky increases your cortisol levels, decreases your immune system. You want your immune system to work at its best right now. Take care of your own immune system. Eat properly. Sleep well. Um, try to get some exercise. Walk around. Uh, get some sunlight. Sunlight. We know that... that um, COVID is probably responding to UV light and heat. If you have vitamin D, take in some vitamin D. If not, sunlight will help. Uh, vitamin C also is very important. So those are the things that you have to understand, guys. There's a lot of things in life that we cannot control, but we can control how we respond to them. So being able to follow these things will absolutely decrease our curve, will keep our hospitals from being overwhelmed, and our mood will get through this just fine. We're gonna be just fine, just as long as we know exactly what we're doing. No need to panic, guys. Um, you all have my office number. If you have any more questions, call us. We're doing all the things that we can here to keep you safe if you need to come in. So God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week this week, and we look forward to getting through this together.